Hi everyone, I'm Miss McCausland and welcome to HMC Draw With Me. In this nugget, I want to give you a quick taster session on drawing an eye. It always helps to know the anatomy and understand the proportions of something before you draw it. So let's have a go at this together. These nuggets are shorter than my full length, more detailed sessions. So if you're enjoying this, come and join me on my YouTube channel. Rewind and pause as often as you need, as I'll be giving you lots of tips on how to draw today. All resources are on my website, heathermccausland.com. I will use equipment that you have in your house already. So you will need a pencil, a sharpener, a rubber and some white A4 paper. Even better if you have your sketchbook too, but no worries if you don't. Cartridge paper is best, but again, ordinary white paper from your printer um, or any just paper that you've got in your home is fine too. Okay, let's get started on this eye. So to explain the anatomy behind the eye a little bit, I've taken a photo with a macro lens of my own eye. This is just a relaxed eye and you can see when you look at it, there are key things that we need to notice. One of them is that the pupil and the iris are both circular. They're absolutely perfect circles. Also, when the eyes relax, you cannot see the white above or below the eye. That's because your eyelid is covering those parts. So if we start by having a look at Leonardo da Vinci's anatomical drawing of a skull, we can see that here you have the sockets where the eyeballs go. Now if I pop eyeballs in there, if I just zoom in a little, like so, and pop some eyeballs in there, you can see that the eyeball sits happily in the eyeball socket. Now, if you're squeamish, I'm really sorry. I'm quite squeamish about eyes too, but it's really fascinating as well. So stay with me on this. Then if I was to draw where the eyelid goes, if I zoom in on that, you can see that's where the eyelid goes. And then further than that, because it looks a bit weird still, I add the eye over the top like so, the skin area, we can see that this is why the pupil and the iris are circular because your eyeball is a perfect sphere too, or near to. These bits around the edges are where the muscles are that help you look around when you, um, yeah, when you look around. So that's the anatomy we need to know behind it. Now, if I show you that original picture from before, in one of my longer sessions, I use this and draw it in high detail over about half an hour, which you can have a look at yourselves. But what I thought would be interesting to do today would be to draw my other eye, but looking surprised so that you can see the difference when you have the white of the eye showing. You can see there I'm looking quite terrified. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box that is 10 centimetres across. But I'm going to draw it slightly more in the middle. So I'm going to go five centimetres in, then I'm going to mark it at 10 and then 15. So five, 10, 15, five, 10, 15. I'm going to do that the other way around as well, going downwards with a ruler. Five, 10, 15. Now, the more you draw things like eyes, the less you will need tools like a grid to help you. But for this one, it will help you to draw it. And I'll explain why in a second. So draw the grid to get these details right. So I've got a grid there, right in the middle. Don't need a ruler again. We don't want to use rulers much whilst we're drawing because it's much better to draw freehand. And what I'm going to draw is draw a dot in the middle, like so. And that's the center point. So now from that, there's our grid and then we've got the eyeball like I've just shown you that's where your eyeball is and we're going to draw that on first now check out my other video to see how to draw circles but I will quickly draw this on so practice in the air first then draw it on like so it doesn't matter if it's a bit messy it's just so symbolizing where our eyeball is and then I want you to draw where the irises. So the iris is about, if that's halfway, it's just inside that halfway line. So it's about there and it'll be the same on the other side. Don't need a ruler to measure it. Use your eye to judge this. 
and then practice and then draw that circle when you're ready. This will mean that when we do our drawing, we'll definitely get a circular iris and pupil. So that's all we need so far. In fact, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit as I draw on the next details. So next, I'm going to use the grid method, which means using these intersecting points like just here. I can see that the edge of the eye just there on the outer of the lid cuts through this line just here and then just here it cuts through as well and then at the bottom of my iris is where it cuts through there and what i can do is use my motor memory to draw that line there remembering that motor memory is practicing it with your wrist first and then drawing it on so it's drawing in the air first and then drawing it on so this next one goes all the way to the edge here and then i can draw that on so do practice your motor memory and then it goes all the way up to here. Learn that curve. Take more time than I am on this. I've practiced the motor memory a lot over the years, so I'm probably going to be faster than you at it. So do take your time to get it right. The inside of the eye has a tear duct, which is a bit triangular and it sticks out like that. It's really important we draw that because that shows that the nose is on this side. We then want to draw the tear duct just there and we're already well on the way to completing it. I'm going to go around where I had the circle before for my iris. I'm going to make this slightly more defined in the middle. Now, you need to make sure that the pupil is in the center of the iris otherwise it will look weird. So you must have a circle and a circle for both of these. Now mine is slightly off. And remember that the larger the pupil, the darker the environment was when the photo was taken because they get smaller when you're out in the light and bigger when you go into the dark. Now, next things that we need to know about this before we shade anything in is that you have a set of hair follicles here and the hairs come out from the outer edge not the inner edge so if that's the inner edge i actually need to draw a second line just here and then i can start drawing these hairs on outwards at the side and they cross over each other and then they go downwards when they reach where the pupil is so just here they go downwards there now the same is for the top. We go upwards here. And then as we go more towards the outside, they get longer and they go more outwards and more horizontally. What I'm going to do is add these bottom ones from that outside one there first, using my motor memory to practice those. Like that. Make sure you cross them over and you don't draw too many. If you were to draw them like this, robotically straight and next to each other, it wouldn't look natural. And the final things that I'm going to show you today are the, is the way that the lines go out from the pupil over the iris. So when you shade, you need to make sure you shade outwards and round like that. And as you can see on the photograph, it's darker on the edge. So I'm going to add in the same direction, going inwards, uh, an almost like a wobbly shade like that. Once you've got all those parts in there, it's a matter of just adding the dark and light tone to the dark and lighter areas, making sure you leave the white of the eye nice and white. And then it's about adding these little wiggly details like that, that vein that you can see there in, in the eye. I'm going to speed up the video and add all the dark tone and details to my drawing now. Good luck with the rest of your drawing. I hope you've enjoyed drawing with me. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.